wait for an opportunity. Those opportunities is when on the surface it wasn't that soft ruffle, it was a big eruption, folks. Can you name one of them? You just, you just remember that two days ago, right? So we're in the taxi going up Mount Tabor, looking down over the Jezreel Valley. Look at that. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples. Until we were able, and here in 350, the early Christians came up here and built themselves a small chapel. Four times, and my question is, how come four times if there is no congregation here? You know what, Nazareth is on the mountains about a day walk from here, about five hours walk. And the Nazarenes used to come here for mass. And that small chapel that we built in the 4th century wasn't good enough or big enough anymore. And archaeology says that they can trace the enlargement of the church four times between 350 and the 900. All right? Now, these guys didn't come up here with a van, I'm assuming, right? <laughs> I always love giving my talk on the transfiguration up here and all the parallels between the Old Testament and the New Testament, between Mount Sinai and Mount Tabor. And then I take people up on the platform and we look out over the Jezreel Valley, the breadbasket of Israel. And then we get in the taxis and we head back down and get on our real bus there with our driver, David, the best driver in Israel. And we head on our way to Cana to renew our wedding vows. fearless leader of this pilgrimage group in September 2018 and I'll introduce you to everybody as they're coming by there's our other fearless leader Amr Shahada the best guide in Israel here's the whole group oh and there's Faustina <laughs> Father Gavin there's everybody so you can see your family made it here safe and sound and having a good time see there they are hi Dan Kevin, there's Joan Brian. too hi. Hello everybody. Now your family knows you made it here safe and corporate travel knows too. Hey Steve. Hey everybody. 
ready. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> so we arrive at the wedding church, which took place in John chapter 2. It's a beautiful church here, by the way. And there was an actual real wedding taking place inside the church. And here we renew our wedding vows. God, our Father, and the love of Christ, who with his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, celebrated the marriage of his friends here in Cana, be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to remember the first miracle of Christ at the wedding feast of his friends at Cana in Galilee. At the request of his mother, Jesus ensured the happy beginning of his friends' life together. As husband and wife, your life for yourself, you know, you don't care about others, I do what I want to do, especially in America. But when God has, in, in his wisdom, made marriage between a husband and a wife, he has made it that beautiful union where men and women can go from being selfish in their love to learning more about true love, God's love, caring about the other first as God cares about. 49 years. 49 years today. So we wish them God's blessings and deep upon all of you. So husbands, you will go first. Please repeat after me. I renew and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. I renew and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I ask you to repeat. I renew and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. I renew and reaffirm my wedding vows to you. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. Once again, I promise to love and honor you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Now, in the new ritual, husbands and wives will say this part together. So I ask you to repeat the words after me, both of you together. Blessed are you, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord. For in the good and the bad times of our life, for in the good and the bad times of our life, you have stood lovingly by our side. You have stood lovingly by our side. Help us, we pray. Help us, we pray. Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth in the peace of God. You may now kiss the bride. <laughs> if you've convinced the doubter and the atheist and the unbeliever. And at the end of John's Gospel, he says the word God comes up again when Thomas falls on his knees after the evidence and says, My Lord and... My God. See how that book ends it? Going down into first century Cana. This is the ground level where Mary and Jesus would have been here in Cana. And this is part of the original church that was built here in the early centuries. And Amr is explaining. You know, testimonies and actually references that we found in ancient manuscripts and documents and comes archaeology only to authenticate. So while our bus is sitting out here, we all came into the Atar restaurant where we always bring our groups. And here they are, we fill the whole restaurant. Everybody's eating the Mizza salad right now. Looking out the window over Nazareth. Unbuckling your, you gotta unbuckle your belt a knot.
magnificent facade, Jesus at the top, of course, the angel coming to Mary at the Annunciation, which happened right here. The angel of the Lord said unto Mary, and then we have the four evangelists, the Gospels, Old Testament references to the coming of Jesus. Then you have here, verbum caro factum est habitant in nobis, that is, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And there you've got the whole story right there in front of your eyes. This is our folks all going down now to the grotto where the angel met Mary 2,000 years ago. The words, hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you, took place right there. That's the entrance of the cave. On the altar there it says, the word became flesh here, here. So we're going to pray the first of the mysteries. First joyful mystery of the Annunciation. So incredible that this is the very place where the Word became flesh. The Incarnation happened. And here is Our Lady of Nazareth, probably a lot like what she looked she, like. That day she gave her son away. When she said to her son, do whatever he tells you, I think she said it with tears in her eyes. Because she'd had this boy living with her for 30 years. She ate breakfast with him. She cooked for him. She cleaned for him. She loved him. She taught him how to pray. She taught him God's word, even though he is the word of God. She taught him to pray to God, even though he is God. In his humanity, he had to learn. He's saying, here's, and she loved this boy. But in Cana, when she said, do whatever he tells you, she wiped the tears from her eyes and walked away because at that moment, she gave her son away. The Church of St. Joseph is built over the cave where the Holy Family lived for 30 silent years. Here it says, this is where he submitted to his parents. Walking through Nazareth here on our way back from the Church of Annunciation, walking through the streets of Nazareth. So here's some of our folks down there talking, enjoying the Sea of Galilee, having a nice cold beer on a warm day. And they want, they can go swimming in the pool. Some are already out in the water. And they got a lot to enjoy here. Beautiful place. Two and a half, two hours of free time. And I'm gonna sign off now. 6.30, we'll go to dinner. And everybody's gonna go to bed early or come back out here and sit along the water. But. Signing off for today, we'll see you tomorrow at the start of the day at the Mount of Beatitudes. Everyone knows where to sit. We have our name tags out, and there's also the tables with a bottle of wine on them. Here is the wonderful food here at Ron Beach, so everybody did have a great meal, and we always love watching the fishermen go out on the Sea of Galilee for the night of fishing.